Hey everybody, thank you very much for stopping by. This is Volin in Pursuit of Art and today I'll be showing you how I did this study. It's after Jean-Leon Jerome's Diogenes. Uh, it took me a total of about 45 hours spread over about 20 days to finish the whole thing. I've condensed it down to about 45 minutes for you, which is still too long, but if I sped it up anymore, you probably wouldn't be able to make out anything that's going on. I apologize for the canvas moving around so much, uh, it's purely for my own sake, I was trying to get everything in place and the only way I could do it was to just move things around and compare all the time. Um, I have the slow down version still, uh, if anyone's interested in maybe just seeing how the figure was done or some other part, just let me know and I'll upload a separate video for you. Okay, let's get going. So the first thing we start with is the line block in. It's easily the most important part of any painting. Um, also probably the least glamorous, uh, maybe even the most boring. Um, you have to spend the time here to make sure you end up where you want to go. Um, this is like your roadmap to the final. I think you can pretty much figure out yourself what's going to happen if you decide to just make up your own map and then go traveling. Um, if you haven't spent the time to research and make sure you are actually going to end up where you want to go, you probably won't be happy after a few days. So. Just basically putting in some lines, trying to establish all the big forms. Nothing is detailed in any way. Um, I'm using mostly straight lines. I'm measuring. Um, I'm holding my stylus at about elbow's length. And I'm just basically comparing to the top where I've put the original and just trying to make sure that all the big volumes are in about the place that they're supposed to be in. The more accu accurate you are at this point, the more time you're going to save yourself later. Um, if you need to adjust something when it's painted, it's so much more difficult than if you just have to erase a line and just put in a new line. After the line blocking is done, and based on my map, as you can see, I am now putting in some color block ins. So this is basically just establishing the large colors. So we're going from big to small, and this really goes for any painting. It doesn't matter if you're doing a study, it doesn't matter if you're doing your own thing. You always pretty much go from big to small, try to figure out the big problems, then get to the small ones. Uh, it's a good tip for anything you're doing in life, really. Um, sorry again about the canvas moving around so much. Again, this is an hour each minute. We're probably already into the second or third hour now. So working from back to front, just like how you would in traditional media. Um, so things can overlap easily. I don't need to worry about painting around things. It's much easier if you just start in the back and move towards the front. You can think yourself if you paint something like a fence and then you need to put the sky behind it, it's going to be so much harder than if you painted the sky first and then you put in the fence. It's so much smarter. So some of the background is done. Uh, to keep my interest level up, I'm going to go over and do something different now. So a bit of rendering, then a bit of adjusting edges now. You can see I've roughed up the edge on the top. And now with a grid, really quickly, I just moved some things around comparing to the original because I don't want to have to move painted things around. They are so much harder to move. By the way, I'm using many, many layers. Uh, as you can see, every time I open up the layer tab, I probably have maybe even a thousand layers by the end of this painting. It's probably into hundreds now. I don't really need all those and I can just collapse the whole thing, but I like keeping the flexibility um, of my painting because I end up changing many things. My drawing is not great at the moment. I'm still working on that. So I try to keep every overlapping element on its own layer. I have all the dogs on their own layers. I have the jar, the fi everything is on its own layer. Um, the background is one layer so then I can add atmospheric perspective behind the main building that's in the foreground. So I'm trying to keep everything separate and the most flexible purely for my own drawing disabilities. I mean, a lot of things I get wrong, so I know that and I keep it flexible so I can work around that. With time though, I plan on improving, so maybe even one layer one day. So at this point, the color blocking is almost complete. Um, I'm still not worried about any details, nothing specific. Everything is very general. Everything is very broad. Um, nothing is final. So even when I did my line drawing in the beginning, I did it with the agreement with myself that I am going to adjust this. So my figure drawing isn't a proper figure drawing. It's just sort of an indication of where my final figure is going to go. So I like to put everything in place so I can see color relationships. 
I'm not very good at being able to judge what a color is going to look like in the future. I need to see it there and then I can compare it to what's around it and then I can sort of anticipate maybe what's going to happen. So I put everything in and then now I start rendering. So I'm going to start with um, the wall. Really I need a bit of a break. I'm not sure what day this is anymore but I just need to do... When I start warming up I normally start with something that's not critical. I don't like warming up with the figure, I like warming up with something that I can just sort of um, play around with. No one cares if dirt's in the exact same place it's supposed to be on the wall, or if the scratch is right there. So I'm actually just roughing out some things, um, trying to detail some stuff out, and if you've never done this before, um, how it happens is you just basically layer a lot of tiny details one on top of the other. There's not a lot of fancy brushes, it's just really the standard chalk brush and I've just set it to rotate around a bit just so it gives me some different shapes. So just roughing out details, just painting here and there, I'm trying to make the overall colors read and trying to establish a sort of color harmony. Uh, you can see I have some purple shadows and then I have warmer um, highlights and warmer lights. And you're actually not going to see a reproduction like that anywhere from Jean-Leon Jerome. It's actually the monitor I'm looking at the original from. It's very red and it got me those nice purples and I actually like them. So that's why I kept them. Um, I'm using really every tool I have available to me from Photoshop. I use vector shapes for the block ins and that's why you can see very, very, very sharp edges at the moment, especially where I'm painting at in the background right now. Um, the thing is though, that's okay, uh, because I know I'm going to go back and I'm going to adjust these. One thing about painting is you have to be comfortable with things not looking right uh, for a very long time. So you have to be able to st sort of stomach failure, if you want to call it that, and just stick with it until you push through it. You have to be able to see beyond the ugliness of the painting right now and just trust that you're going to have a pretty painting by the time you're done. And this used to be a huge problem for me before because I just didn't understand that that's how it works. Um, at this moment, um, I really didn't intend to do this. Um, I planned to have the painting, uh, the, the original, on the side and just paint from that. Um, but at this point, my girlfriend actually wanted to do something on my other monitor, so I had to put it over here. So it's easier if you paint um, from something that's right next to where you're painting. It makes it much easier to get measurements correct, even though my dog is actually a bit smaller than the original dog. Um, it's if, if you're a beginner, it's much easier to just have a setup like this. Just whatever you're trying to paint, just cut it out, post it next to where you're going to paint, and you'll see an immediate improvement in your accuracy. It's much harder to try to keep proportions in mind, to try to size things. Um, the way I'm copying this is actually I wanted it to be a bit harder. So my other monitor is a different size to my main monitor. So I had to upsize and upscale everything. I had to enlarge everything. So this led me to a lot of problems with proportion and things like that later on. So if you already have enough trouble uh, just dealing with value and color and shapes and all that stuff, don't do that to yourself. There's no need for it. I mean, with time, you will get better. I promise you that. And I'm going to write about it soon on my blog about why it works and it's to do with your brain is just how we're set up to do things you just you have to repeat things many many times and your brain just automates everything uh, moving on to the painting the first dog is almost complete and this actually means that I'm detailing things now and even though I'm not finished with outlining even broad forms like the floor at the moment I just need to sometimes I just need a break I can't make myself just go in a corner and some people I know can work perfectly starting in the top left corner and just rendering everything out to the bottom right corner. I'm not really that confident. Um, I also can't judge relationships that well. So I prefer to work um, on the whole painting. Even though I do try to keep my efforts concentrated at one particular spot and finish it out and then move on, um, a painting I found works sort of in, in layers, in stages. So anytime you, like at the moment, if you look at the dog, it pro it's the most detailed thing there is that exists on the painting. 
but after I push everything along, that dog is not going to be detailed enough, and then I'm going to detail it again, and then I'm going to do another pass on everything else, and then I'm going to detail it again. So it's a constant back and forth, it's a constant um, seeing of more details, it's a constant adjustment, as I just did now, I just changed the shape of that whole jar. It's a constant looking and reevaluating and just finding things that you didn't see before, and it's like, how could I not have seen this, like this is so obvious. But that's the great thing about painting, is that it seems easy when you see it, and when you see the final it seems so simple to do, which is why I started this copy by the way. I thought to myself, well, it's just one guy and some dogs, and the background's very loose and simple. I can probably do this in a few hours. So, 40 hours later, and about a month later now, I'm just trying to record the audio for it. So, yeah, it really doesn't work out in reality as you see it in your head. Like with everything else. I mean, to get something to come out of your head on a canvas or a piece of paper or whatever it is you're doing, it takes years to do that and it's not fair but that's how it works and to be honest if it was easy everyone would do it so it's a lot more satisfying when you actually do spend the time to be able to do that so putting in some more details so again even though I have some things that are refined I'm still not even done with blocking in or refining other areas like if you look at the dog in the bottom left corner that's just a gooey mess of dog whereas the right one over there is just looking at everything else thinking what, what is going on here so painting some of the sack um, some of the cloth I've actually painted everything but the figure I, I tried to not touch the figure at all I tried to have everything else ready and then do the figure um, the figure really is the focal point so I wanted to save all my efforts for it it really the figure took me just about as much time as the whole painting so if you're interested in just the figure and I really should have said that earlier you should just skip to about 20 25 minutes in so anything that you do really in painting the procedure is exactly the same uh, the cloth that I just painted that started from general to specific everything else I do it starts from general to specific first I just rough it in and it looks like just a big mass of nothing and then you just add more and then you add more and then you add some more and then it becomes specific you always work from the general to the specific no matter what you do a head is just a blob of paint and then a likeness becomes the specific so everything starts out the same uh, you can see now that the wall that the wall reads like a wall, that all the forms are there, that you can see where the shadow area is, where the light area is, that's when you put in the smaller details. You can detail something when it's not ready for detail. There's just no point to it. You might find that you have to move it, you might find that it's not the right value relationship to everything else, you might find so many things when you establish the general forms. So always general to specific. Save the details for last. I mean, it's like cake. It's delicious to put in the last detail. I mean, when you're done with everything and you just put that last highlight in, it just, whoa, it just reads. It's there. It's finally there. That is so much better than if you just have sort of a rough, bad approximation at the start. And then you end up having to destroy it because it's not in the right place. Uh, you can see from time to time uh, some red notes pop up. I keep notes for what I'm doing so I can keep track of what I need to fix. Again, this took about 20 days so I needed to remind myself of like whoa this is terrible this needs fixing this needs to be moved over this needs to be bigger so you don't fix you, you don't do everything at one time you need to basically learn how to schedule things for the future you need to be able to delay things you need to be able to know what needs doing and you need to basically know which stage uh, you should be doing at any one time and we are into the detailing of the second dog now, uh, which basically means making any changes to the silhouette if needed, uh, just trying to get, just finalizing the general shapes now. When you get to detailing, no more general stuff. So start with finishing off, establishing fully the general, and then moving into the specific. So shaving off anything off the silhouette that we need to, for instance, like I just did a bit of the paws, shaved off a bit of the muzzle, and then once my silhouette is established then I get into the detailing and detailing is basically just a lot of time going into a fairly small area as you can see uh, the picture used to change very much 
over a minute like if you just play the first two minutes of the video you go from nothing to the color blocking being done the whole scene established whereas now I can spend hours in one little corner trying to fix one little thing um, as you can see I again I just work in stages I do some detailing then I move over to another place um, basically this happens one because I probably have ADD and two because as I work on something and my attention wanes and I just can't look at it anymore I start noticing other things that I didn't see before like oh look at that rock I missed off a little speck over here or a little stone over there or like look, oh look at that paw like that's just broken right now I need to fix that so then I, I move from one place to another I go backwards and forwards constantly I'm not entirely sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing it just happens to work uh, but it makes you notice things like the more you look at one particular place the more your brain just sort of get gets used to looking at it and you get an impression of the thing and you can't see it for what it is anymore so it's a good thing if you can't if you know that something's wrong with your drawing but you're not entirely sure what it is I would suggest moving over to a different area maybe do something that doesn't require your attention that much uh, something that's easy to do something that doesn't need to be precise and just give your brain a rest with that area just noodle something over there and then by the time you're done you can probably spot what's wrong with what you were doing uh, another good thing to do is flip the canvas or just get a new perspective basically anything just walk away that's another good thing to do is just give yourself an hour or two um, I normally don't finish anything without first giving it about a day break so I give myself a day away from it then I go back and look at it the problem with that is that sometimes you might not ever finish anything um, into the third dog now and that was pretty quick um, this one from what I can see I'm just trying to suggest mostly I'm not trying to render every hair um, I render the fur as just um, patches of light and dark tones even you, you can see there's just not a lot of detail on it but it does read as fur and that's because you basically just try to imply with a few brush strokes that just you can see the lights extending into the darks and that gives you the impression of something protruding which in this case is the hair also the edges are very important uh, to make something look fuzzy you just basically need to have a lot of fuzzy edges even if you don't have a lot of fuzzy things in the main bulk of the figure if you have fuzzy edges that's definitely gonna help and I will probably go over the dogs a few more times and it's just going crazy now uh, from what I can see just all over the place just changing things this is probably another day of work and just looking at everything and moving things around I'm even changing um, as you can see I'm changing big shapes which I told you is a bad idea to try to move things when they're painted and you can see why it's because you have to repaint after now remember that this is one minute per hour so that mistake over there of the jar um, the clay jar where I just moved the edge of it that's probably an hour that I lost having to repaint things over there because it wasn't in the right place to start with uh, lots of tiny details here and there uh, bouncing around trying to just finish up this tighten up that um, being con more concerned with edges more concerned with details now um, going from the general to the specific means that you need to tighten up so general things normally overlap a lot when you start out everything overlaps you have fuzzy edges um, if you've seen Feng Ju videos where he goes with like a crystal brush and just goes over everything that gives you a lot of overlap uh, not a lot of solid edges it leaves a lot of room for sanding things down I think Michelangelo said that uh, he finds the sculpture in the stone and that basically happens by just shaving pieces off so you start with the general you start with the block of clay or stone or just a blob of paint and you just go from the general to the specific sanding things down eliminating things that are unnecessary or defining things more clarifying things all the time basically this whole painting was established in the second hour but it was too unspecific if you just pause it at the second minute you could see the background you could see the foreground you can see the ideas basically of Diogenes and of the dogs but you can't uh, see the specifics of them and that's why it doesn't grab you it doesn't speak to you because there's just not a lot for you to recognize so the more specifics you introduce the more recognizable your objects become the more people will be able to identify with them the more solid your work becomes 
so God is in the details in one sense so just be careful uh, where you put the details you might be looking in the wrong place uh, doing the final dog now after refining everything around it putting some more things in the background uh, this is the final dog and it's actually the only sort of portrait of a dog uh, in this whole piece and it was actually hard to do I wasn't sure about the size of the head uh, looking at it now it seems a bit too large I'm pretty sure I'd change it a few more times I think I already changed it a few times but I'm probably gonna end up making even more changes to it and again that's the great part about working digital and working on layers like me um, some people don't like it because it gets messy it is very messy um, I like to keep things organized as you can see I have some groups but later on in the painting I lose complete track of everything and to be honest by that point though it doesn't really matter to me uh, my PC can handle the layers and I don't mind keeping them if I need to change something but by the end I'm really I'm, I'm ready to just collapse everything and just paint on top that would have been fine uh, it's really mostly for these stages where you're still moving things where there's overlap like as you can see I just moved the whole dog over if that was painted on I would have so much trouble having to repaint the building behind it, having to repaint the pavement and everything surrounding it. So if you're a beginner, I would suggest definitely keep layers. Uh, if you're more advanced, well, you probably know what to do and you probably wouldn't have made it this late into the video anyway. More detailing, I'm glad, I'm glad I managed to keep the canvas in one place. Um, again, if anyone wants to see a slower version of me painting something, just let me know. I'm probably going to keep the files for another few months. So if you ha happen to see this, just let me know. And if not, I'll just probably make some more demos for you. Um, by the way, uh, I don't know who's watching these, but please just let me know what the most helpful thing for you uh, would be. Um, I plan on making a lot of videos. Um, I'm self-taught. Uh, this painting marks about the 10th month of my training. So I'm teaching myself and I want to help others. So please let me know what you struggle with. I know it's a tough thing to do. It's definitely the hardest thing I've done so far is to just try to teach myself to do this. So yeah, just let me know. Uh, please leave me some comments. Let me know who's watching. Let me know what you need and I'll try to help you out. The detailing stages of a painting are definitely the not they're not the most exciting thing to watch. Uh, they're also not the most exciting thing to do. Um, I do think there's a lot of merit to doing these though. I mean, you if you have ADD or trouble with doing anything for a prolonged period of time, I mean, this will teach you some serious patience. Um, just the work that you have to put in into every single square centimeter that you paint, I mean, every tiny little dot, every tiny little speck, you need to spend the time on it. Um, for me, this is really one of the most important things about painting. It will teach you just to be a better person. I mean, all the things that you don't want to do, it will force you to do. Um, if you're not disciplined, if you're not hardworking, I mean, you, you, in my opinion, you won't be able to be a good painter. You need to learn to work. I mean, my background is mostly uh, weightlifting and athletics and things like that, uh, so physical work. And I can apply this really to just anything now. I mean, just learning to work hard is a skill that just translates to anything you do. Just learning to spend the time on wherever your time needs to go, on improving and trying to do the best job you can. I mean, that's a vital skill in anything you do. So I know it might not be a great thing to watch. Uh, it definitely wasn't um, a, a great thing to do, but I've just sort of learned over time to just spend the time that needs to be spent on what I, it doesn't even matter how long it takes I mean it could be an hour to just finish a dog it could be five hours or ten hours to finish it if it's worth doing it then it's just worth putting the time in so it, the 80 20 rule definitely operates here where about 20 percent of your efforts uh, gives you the 80 percent of your results because if you just think about it, again, two hours in, the painting was just sort of there. The dogs would probably look like dogs. The figure, well, you could probably realize that it's a figure. But the 80% of your time that needs to go in to just finish the 20% of detailing and finish. And it really, 80% of the time is just detailing. I mean, if you have an idea and if you just want to quickly sketch it out, you will need to spend so much more time to finish it. it it's never easy, um, I can tell you that much. You just need, to, if, if you're impatient, 
you just need to slow down and you need to learn the time you need to learn to take the time to finish things um, finally into the figure now and this is definitely the hardest part I'm glad I saved this for last I mean I will have to adjust some things here and there but I'm glad that I could just focus solely on this um, you can see the video stopping here and there and this is actually me measuring so I again I have the painting on the side on another monitor and I'm just really really trying hard to paint this correctly um, I actually ended up repainting the figure so you're actually seeing a second or third version of it uh, I wasn't really satisfied with how the other two turned out turned out I wanted to take um, more time again I wanted to take more time to just refine it and do it properly uh, because I saw that the way I was painting I was painting that way because the digital medium allows me to be sloppy and I don't want to work like that I want to learn to work smart and efficient and basically I'm sure that if you're a master you you don't paint and repaint everything 50 times the idea of a master is someone that can do something properly and in the end in the finished product there is beauty I mean that's what it's like to me so I don't want to just end up with a pretty result which in the end I do admit I lost patience that's why some things aren't they're not done perfectly like the lantern will be oversized the the expression and the face isn't exactly the same but diminishing returns do hit at some point when you're doing a longer study so it's good to just know when you've reached the point where you're okay to move on to the next thing the figure drawing is very basic uh, mostly straight lines I'm not trying if if I do curves I know my curves are very bad so I know if I try to go along and do curves everything is gonna be out of place so it's mostly just straight lines um, rough indications of muscles uh, nothing too elaborate I'm basically making the drawing again with the agreement with myself that I'm probably gonna end up changing this later on and this is true um, I end up changing especially the front leg I had a lot of trouble with it the one that uh, is right next to the dog in what's now the lower right corner so uh, I had a lot of trouble with that leg um, I had to repaint the hands many times uh, no surprise there um, the face I haven't really properly blocked in yet um, as for the anatomy and how much anatomy you should study um, I definitely recommend knowing the muscle names and I you, you need to know where the muscles originate from and where they go to um, Really, I guess it just all depends on the style that you want to draw. Uh, if you want to be a painter, though, if you want to be able to um, basically, let's say, uh, work like an old master, I mean, you will need to know as much as an old master knew. Uh, you will need to just spend the time to learn all those things. Um, it really doesn't take a lot, and it's like a puzzle that's very fun to do after you get good at it, like with everything. So it's good if you spend the time and don't skimp on your learning. I mean... I know that when you start it seems like everything just takes so long and it is true it does but you also need to understand that once it goes into your head it stays there so make the investment into building up your visual library into just developing your knowledge if you do want to do this for a long long time if you want to do this for a living there's no reason why you shouldn't spend as much time as you possibly can on learning I mean you want your work to be great don't you everyone does so all that means is that if you want to be great you have to make great work and that means you have to spend a lot of time learning I mean nothing happens without studying this is where everything comes from even when you work professionally you are still essentially studying I mean no one that's professional is ready for anything everyone learns from every job if it's a good job um, so again for the anatomy um, I definitely recommend studying um, all the muscles I definitely recommend you know all the names I extremely important um, to know where the origins and insertions are this is just so you know where why muscles are there basically and where they go um, for instance with the legs when I get to them um, there's two insertions of a tendon uh, one is from the biceps femoris and the other one is just from the ilo iliotibial band so if you don't know where each one is and where they go you might uh, get the connections wrong and then someone that does know might spot that in your work and then you'll know that they're either an artist or a doctor I don't think anyone else on the planet would have any idea about any of this stuff um, but anatomy is one of your tools and figure drawing is basically just a tool 
for storytelling. I know that it seems like when you're doing all the exercises for figure drawing and all that stuff, it seems like the purpose is just basically to be able to draw the figure. But the drawing of the figure is a narrative tool. It's a tool for you to be able to use when you want to tell a story. Like I want to position a figure here. I want this figure to be there because it symbolizes this or that or it says this or that. And your ability to draw the figure is what makes it possible for you to communicate a story. So spend your time learning, spend your time um, doing everything that you need to do. And later on, those lessons, even if you don't understand, just basically anything you're not good at, try to get better at it. I mean, for anything in life, really, just try to get better at it. Um, later on, these things will help you. Even if you don't see the benefit of doing figure drawing after figure drawing, when it gets to the time where you're doing your own work and you need to paint the figure, you will know how much greater it feels to just be able to do it. Uh, for me now, at this moment, uh, that I'm still not at that stage. I can sort of copy things, but I'm not at the point where I can utilize anatomy as a tool. I just realize its importance. Um, a bit of a break from the figure. Going back to the dogs, this is probably just a warm-up uh, for a new day or a new recording. Um, getting back into the figure, uh, trying to define some of the anatomy now. S the sections of the pectoral muscles, um, trying to get um, all the different sections to read correctly. And also trying to balance out my colors. Um, my figure sort of looks like a wax sculpture at this moment and I'm going to end up adding a lot of warmth to it. Um, really that's the key to having a lifelike figure is to really introduce a lot of warmth into the areas where there's a lot of I don't I think it's probably blood flow and of course it's the subsurface scattering that produces all the color life um, sorry light goes in um, to a surface and then it bounces around because there's some degree of transparency to the skin so light can enter penetrate the skin and then bounce around inside of all the tissue and everything else that's in there and it warms up significantly so if you were to just paint the figure uh, without any added warmth, uh, it won't look like the skin's transparent. It wouldn't look like light penetrates it. It would just look like wax reflecting light or just any other surface. So you want to add a lot of warmth uh, to your figures or you just want to add um, some type of uh, way to just communicate that this form transmits light and that subsurface scattering is there. I'm getting off point. Um, adding some more, by the way, uh, again, this is, the figure is split into many layers. So anytime I have an overlapping area, uh, like the front leg, the leg in the front, the one that's almost completely defined, and then the arm that overlaps the body, I've, I've made silhouettes of those. So I've, I've made sure that I separate those from the rest of the figure. And this is because my edges otherwise would be, those would be very hard for me to control. Um, I'm very concerned with rendering. I'm still practicing. So my rendering isn't great. I have a lot of trouble um, just communicating form, trying to have smooth, nice transitions. So I know that with all those, you can basically just keep a few things at a time in your head. You can't work on multiple things at a time. So I know that if I want to work on my rendering properly, I need to at least not have to worry about edges. I mean, you can't have too many trouble. You can't have too many problems at one time. It's just not a good thing. So I keep silhouettes and uh, those were some notes again. You can see I'm saving for later. So I have figure notes and then I have painting notes. I have uh, notes for the figure and I have notes for the whole painting that I keep. Um, again, the silhouettes, I keep them locked. So I make a silhouette um, of, what I, of the overlapping area like the arm or the leg. I make just a shape of it. I fill it with a color. Then I lock the transparency or I just make a clipping layer and then I paint in that. And then I'm going to go over, like you can see the back of the deltoid. You can see how uh, there's a harsh edge over there. Uh, it doesn't connect to the back. So I'm just going to paint over that when I'm done. So when I paint the arm properly, when I'm done with it, then I can paint the transition between the overlapping areas. And I'm going to end up softening the edges because the arm is like razor sharp at the moment. It does look like a cutout, but I will soften that up later. Um, I'm working on the cloth now and the cloth I used is a warm-up um, area. So again like I said before I like to have areas that aren't um, crucial and I don't need to be very accurate with. 
so I can just sort of when I come into the painting I can just warm up on that and I'm really really glad the cloth was there because I ended up recording the figure over many many days and I had to warm up many times to get started and with a difficult area you really don't want to get into it like the more I paint the figure the more I realize how difficult this actually is how many different areas there are for me to work on I mean just think it's it took just as much time as the whole of the painting for me of course uh, and my skill level at the moment it just took me that much time though and it was that much harder for me than anything else so I just gave myself the space to be able to go somewhere else and not have to deal with hard stuff when I wasn't ready for it and then dive into it and some things like the hands I saved almost for last and I would make sure that it's the beginning of a day when I start with them um, and now I'm actually getting to the hands um, I'm doing another drawing on top of what I already have there I'm measuring again I'm checking alignments of uh, landmarks I, I've found from the original that one uh, that one finger is directly above the other finger so I could position these things I I'm also taking a measurement um, from the alignment of the head and in the original uh, the top finger aligns with the forehead so I make sure I, I connect those as well I had a lot of difficulty actually with sizing the hands I ended up painting them and then I realized they were a bit too small um, I think that's one thing with difficult areas at least for me I think it's a type of fear where we we are timid about going into something we're afraid of so we end up making it smaller or another thing is we make things too large which is another thing I do and that's when I'm being sloppy so another thing drawing and painting help you out with is just I guess learning to know yourself and how you deal with problems I've definitely found out uh, I'm very reluctant to go into things that are difficult for me but you have to with every single painting so you'll definitely get to work on your character as you work on your paintings um, did the drawing of the hands ended up not painting them right away though uh, I just covered the deltoid transition that I spoke about earlier where there was the harsh edge as you can see I've defined most of the muscles and landmarks in the arm so I was ready to go ahead and cover up um, where the things connect doing some more work on the leg trying to define the tendon of the rectus femoris uh, how it connects it's a very beautiful landmark for me um, probably didn't paint it very nicely but it's still to me just the amount of detail that goes into the tendons and the muscles that's incredible um, I don't know how I never noticed any of these things before before I started training myself I never used to look at things I never used to care before it just wasn't important to me but now the more I look at things and the more I learn the more beauty I sort of end up finding everywhere so to me it's just a great thing to be able to paint these things even if it's over and over and over it doesn't feel like work to me it's just sort of like I don't know it's like a treat to get to just make something that's pretty but maybe that's just me going back into the head now that I'm just sort of more certain about the fact that it's in the right place I can actually refine it more um, I'd started with the head uh, got it to a, a much more finished stage than the rest of the body then realized that maybe I might have to move it so ended up painting more of the body left the head for later and then again like I said before it's just layers on top of layers of just details and paint so if you're if you're drawing or painting doesn't look right um, from the first stroke don't worry about it because it never does uh, a painting is basically just it's like a living thing I mean it just keeps getting adjusted and keeps changing and keeps changing all the time so a a stroke is not a final thing it's not a final statement anything can be changed then I know it's digital but even with oils you can just wipe them off and just start over um, it's a flexible thing and you need to be flexible in your mind about how you approach things so you're able to go back and adjust and compensate for your lack of technical ability with just your ability to work through problems and persevere uh, basically that the difference between a finished painting and an abandoned one is just perseverance I mean whether you it's either you care about it enough to go in it and figure out all the problems or you don't and then you're just ready to start something new I mean that's all of our new age ADD that we all have we're used to things being quick it's very hard for me to do the same thing over and over but 
apparently not very hard for me to say the same thing over and over because I keep saying the same things, but those are the things I think about when I paint, or at least when I stop painting and I can think about what I've just done. Those are the things that sort of come to mind. Uh, more warm-up cloth. I think that was just about enough cloth to warm up while finishing the figure. I wonder Jean-Leon Jerome did it the same way. Because to me that was great to be able to just go somewhere where I don't have to think about anything when I have all those problems. Like as you can see, I haven't done the hands and then I'm almost done with the figure and then I realized I have things that I haven't even blocked out yet. I mean, things that are not even started yet. And then I have parts of the figure that are almost finished and I really didn't want to start those because it's just so much work having to deal with any problems that might arise and I really didn't want any more problems and I would gladly have stopped it there if I wasn't recording this to be honest because I really don't want to have to do those and hands and the lantern took me quite a bit of time I think there's about nine minutes left which is about nine ten hours so that's how long it took me from here to finish uh, doing the hands having some trouble of course and this all comes from the drawing purely my own technical skill is where the fault comes from I end up changing um, just the angle of the hands multiple times um, just trying to align them properly together. I think at one point I even realized that maybe the whole arm might be too short apart from the hands just not being large enough. Blocking in the lantern, I'm using some vector shapes again just like how I blocked in the whole painting. Uh, it's, it's a geometric shape so it lends itself pretty nicely to using uh, the vector tools because they are main, meant for mostly for straight edges and things like that. Um, so I just make, make a few shapes and then just adjust the shapes and blend the edges together. Uh, really that's the whole secret to painting if you just think about it. Those are the basic processes for any painting. Make sure your edges are right, make sure your colors and shapes are correct and you're pretty much done. Um, putting in details of the lantern, warming it up, um, trying to think about how the light would affect the figure. So as you can see there's some light on the forearm. Uh, there's also some warmth on the cloth, there's warmth in the shadows, um, and again, I'm probably gonna, you can see some reds in the skin as well, um, this is just for the subsurface scattering. As light penetrates the surface, it loses energy, um, so it changes wavelengths, uh, something like that. To be honest, I've read this many times, but basically all it means to us, in terms of just practical knowledge, is that if there is some translucency to a surface, if a warm light goes in, it goes towards red. If it's a blue light, I think it goes towards cyan, but that I haven't seen that very often in nature. Um, if you just look at a candle, let's say, and you can look at the wax, or just anything really that um, you just hold up, and then let's say you pick up a leaf and then you hold it uh, between you and the sun, and if you just look at the underside of it, you'll see how much it warms up, and this is because of all the light rays that bounce inside of the surface, and the wavelengths apparently losing energy, uh, turning the light to a warmer hue, because I think red is the shortest wavelength, but anyway, I'm not going to talk about that anymore, because I just haven't researched it, and it doesn't mean a lot to us, to be honest. It's just good to know that everything you do really is just related to physics. Um, I used to hate physics and things like that and math. And then I found out how just ubiquitous they are. I mean, everything we do is related to math and physics and things like that. I mean, how light moves, that's physics. Um, math, basically anything that you can see in this picture is just pure geometry. So everything we do is just related to so many things. And it's a great thing to just understand a little bit of what goes on. Not that I can think about any of this stuff while I'm painting, I mostly think of just terrible things that are going on and how I'm probably not going to be able to finish and how it looks like crap, but it's nice when you can look at it after and then, oh, there's some subsurface scattering. So close to, well, not really close to the end, still the hands need to be refined, the, f the, f the leg and the foot in the front are definitely something that I struggled with all the way to the end of the painting. Um, again, I'm going to say this again because I've said it uh, so many times, but I haven't said it in the last few minutes. From general to specific, again, as you can see, first I blocked out the whole figure and then rendered it and then put in the veins as the last thing. Uh, you can see there are some things that aren't even there. Always save your details for last. So like the veins in the hand, if I put them in now, I'm going to be in trouble. And the only reason why I would put them in now is just so I feel 
better about myself because I've put in something that's supposed to go in there and that stops me from solving the more important problems of wow this whole hand isn't supposed to be there even if I painted the pretty vein there so procrastinating a bit more on the cloth you can see some warmth in the shadow of the cloth too you can see some red right underneath the leg just a nice warming up of the whole thing going back to the face more procrastination uh, inevitably though I just need to go into the hands and into the foot and solve these. I've been, that foot bothered me for days and I just left it. And you, earlier in the notes, I just had two exclamation marks and a big circle around the foot, but that didn't really fix it. So I, I had to do it in the end. And there's just nothing you can do. When you have problems, there's just nothing you can do, but just work to fix them. And here we go with the hands. And to be honest, just your very work on fixing a problem is going to improve it. So there's no point in just waiting for whatever it is that you're scared to do or whatever it is you're doing. There's no point in waiting on that. Just do as much as you can. It's going to improve your situation again, no matter what you do. Just the, the workflow of painting applies to so many things in life. It's crazy. I wish I could remember these when I'm next in the store or doing something or have a problem. But the more I talk to you guys, hopefully the more I'm going to remember them and the more I'm going to get to apply them. And it has to be foot time sometime soon. I mean, there's just nothing. I'm running out of painting. I can start a whole new master study and finish it and still not be ready for that foot. But it just needs to be done at some point. Going into the hands now, bravely and finally, because I'm just tired of doing this. There's about three minutes left. So this is 37, 40 hours in. I think I'm pretty much ready to f wrap up and finish now. I mean, it's 20 days of the same painting. If you think of just coming back from work, and, and just sitting down to have to do something you've been doing for the last 20 days. I mean, that is a job. So by this time, I'm really ready to finish. And finally, spending some time on the foot. I'm so proud of myself. Spending the time on the foot just for a second and then moved away. Um, I'm really not sure if I ended up managing to fix the front foot as much as I would like to have had. I know I changed the size of it many times. It's still the alignment of the foot um, is a bit different uh, in the whole leg actually. is a bit different in, in, the, in the original painting. I just ended up resizing the hands. This is when I realized it might be a bit too small. And then again resizing the foot just now. Uh, it did look a bit skinny. Um, there's just a lot of bone in there. There's the tibia, there's the fibula. It's just a very solid construction if you think that it keeps the whole body up. And I'm really not very familiar with uh, feet and hands, I have to admit. I haven't spent quite nearly enough time painting or drawing those. Spend a lot of time of my anatomy studying, just learning all the muscles and everything else. But as I'm sure all people, I have not spent a lot of time. I don't even know the bones in the hands and the feet. All the small little bones and little weird connections between them and pissy form bone and whatever I, I guess I'll have to do it someday but I haven't gotten to that stage yet more footwork getting close to finishing um, you can see me changing brushes here and there uh, for the people that are concerned about brushes don't really worry about them uh, I just grab any random brush and if I need texture I just try to find something that's just gonna give me some irregular um, texture, that's all, just some irregular scatter, that's all. As Most of the time, as you can see, it's just a regular round brush or it's one of the sponge brushes. They're all just default to Photoshop, so it's either the chalk brush, the round brush, or just any sponge, just anything that'll give me some texture. Um, I think this is the part where I'm sort of content with the figure, just moving backwards and forwards between foreground or anything else that I could see. This is the final detail that I just added in, that little uh, lid or whatever it is for the lamp, that opening thingy. So this is almost the final now. Uh, thank you very much. If anyone's made it to the end, uh, I don't know, call me or whatever, we can be friends forever. I don't think anyone will ever see the end of this. But thank you very much. I wish you all the best. Please let me know what you need. I'm learning by myself. Uh, let me know if I can help you with anything and let's just do this thing together. You can find me on Facebook or on my blog or here on YouTube. I'll be posting many new things. Thanks everybody and have a great day. Thank you.